All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a full case study for free of a store that I launched that ended up doing $500,000 in just 50 days. So on the left-hand side, um, you guys can see a screenshot that was taken directly from my Shopify dashboard. And you can see that, that I did $362,000 USD. Um, that equates to about 520,000 AUD. And that was all done within a time frame of about 50 days. So I'm gonna go through now and show you guys everything step-by-step step, just so you guys know exactly what to do. Okay, so what we're gonna cover in today's video is gonna be the uh, store results, uh, the store design, the product, uh, the Facebook ad launch strategy, uh, scaling the product, automation, and also my ad account overview. So at the end, I'm gonna go through my ad account and show you guys everything I did, um, what I launched and how I launched it, just so um, you guys can follow along and also do the same thing. So the first thing we're gonna cover is gonna be the uh, store results. So here um, you can see, it's gonna be me just going through my store and like refreshing the page. And then on the um, right hand side, it's gonna be on my phone. So I'm just um, going through that and showing you guys one day. And on that day, um, we ended up doing over $16,000 USD in sales. So yeah, this is just proof um, to show you guys that uh, this is not fake and um, this is actually like all my results. Because I know um, like a lot of people out there um, they just don't show you like the actual results, but um, I want to be uh, transparent with you guys and show you guys that um, it's actually possible to do. So yeah, so um, I've just shown you guys all my results. So uh, the next thing that we're going to cover is going to be the store design. So for the uh, store design on this store, um, I pretty much base it on a one product store. So that's what I focus on. Um, I don't focus on um, general stores or niche stores. I focus on uh, purely one product stores. Um, the theme that I use is debut, which is the uh, free theme that you get when you first sign up. Um, in my opinion, that is the uh, best theme. In my opinion, that is the uh, best theme within Shopify. Um, it's just uh, a very simple and clean theme. So what you wanna do is create a very minimalistic and a very simple design store, just so that way customers don't get confused. Um, you don't wanna add any uh, countdown timers or any uh, spammy pop-ups on your store. That's something that um, you would do back in 2017 and also 2018. But now because we're in uh, 2019 going into uh, 2020, um, it's just like a very uh, spammy thing and it makes you look like a dropshipping store, which is something that um, you don't wanna come off as. Um, so what I've also done is I've given you guys a list of apps that I used on my store, just so um, you guys have an idea of uh, which apps I used. So the next thing we're gonna cover is gonna be the product. So now for the product I chose, it was a product that solves a very common problem. Um, the product was also not easily found in stores and the product had a wow factor to it. And I made sure that I put that wow factor inside the video ad just so customers get intrigued by the product and actually uh, click on the ad. Um, this product was also trending up on Google Trends, which is a um, good sign as well. And at that time, there was only one main store selling the product, but uh, the engagements on their video ad were insane. So every, you know, uh, like one or two minutes, um, they were getting a comment on the video uh, tagging a friend or saying they purchased. And to me, that was just a good sign of a product that I should test. Um, also on AliExpress, uh, there was approximately uh, 2,000 orders for the product at that time. Um, now there's more, but yeah, um, at the time there was uh, 2,000 orders, which to me meant that the product wasn't uh, too saturated. So that was pretty much uh, the product that I chose. Now the next thing that I'm gonna cover is gonna be the Facebook ads launch uh, strategy. So for my uh, Facebook ad strategy, what I pretty much do is I focus on um, engagement campaign first, and then from there, um, I just go to a, a conversion campaign. So the point of the um, engagement campaign is just to get a uh, social proof on your video, because um, you don't want to run an ad to customers that has uh, no social proof or zero views and no likes or comments. So you just want to make sure that um, before running a purchase campaign, that there is uh, some likes and comments on the video. Um, so for my um, engagement campaign, what I focus on is I launch uh, three ad sets. So one ad set is gonna be a budget of $20. Um, the platform is gonna be mobile only and you wanna target both Facebook and Instagram feeds. Now for the uh, second ad set, um, you want a budget of $10 and that's gonna be also mobile only, but you wanna target only Facebook feeds. And for the third ad set, um, that's also gonna be a budget of $10, um, mobile only as well, but um, you wanna target Instagram feeds only. Um, location is gonna be worldwide, excluding the big five. So you wanna um, 
exclude US, UK, Canada, Australia, and also New Zealand. Um, the reason we do this is so we can get uh, more engagements for a cheaper price. Um, the age is gonna be all, um, that was for my product. Um, the gender is gonna be based on your product. So um, if you're selling like a maker product, um, you're obviously gonna target um, just females only. Um, the interest, I stack 10 to 15 interest with large audiences and expand interest, you wanna turn that off and also optimization for ad delivery that's gonna be post engagement. Now moving on to the uh, conversion campaign, what I do here is I set all my budgets for each ad set at $5.01. Um, the reason I do that is because that extra one cent is gonna pull me um, ahead of everyone else because uh, Facebook is a bidding system. So you wanna make sure that um, you're just one step ahead of everyone. Um, locations, you wanna target um, EPAC countries. The age is gonna be all again, gender based on your product. So the interest per ad set is you're gonna target one interest with a large audience per ad set. So um, in one ad set, I'm gonna have one interest, next ad set, um, another interest, and then uh, so on. Expand interest, you wanna turn that off as well. So the platform for the uh, conversion campaign is gonna be mobile only, but you wanna target only Facebook and Instagram feeds. And the um, optimization for ad delivery is gonna be uh, conversions. And what you wanna do is you wanna launch 10 to 15 ad sets. So for each ad set, just remember to add one interest per ad set. Now going on to the next thing is gonna be scaling. So scaling uh, this product, I used uh, CBOs, look like audiences, and also retargeting. So pretty much what I was doing is increasing budget on my ad account every single day until my ROAS drops. And when that drops, um, what you wanna do is you wanna cut back and you wanna um, kill the bad ad sets that are not performing well and um, you wanna scale the profitable ones. So you wanna make sure that you're always killing bad ad sets and you're scaling the profitable ad sets. And also every single day you wanna introduce new ad sets. So um, that is one way to um, scale, which is like in my opinion, the best way to scale. Um, and for the CBOs, what I do is I filter by the past three days. So the uh, top five best performing interests, based on the ROAS, um, I throw them into a CBO at uh, $50 a day. And I do this for the um, next top five best performing ad sets as well. And I keep doing this until all uh, profitable ad sets have been thrown into a CBO. And for the budget, uh, I'm gonna start at $50 as I mentioned before, but then uh, when you scale, duplicate the budget. So from 50 to 100, and then after 100 to 200, and then 200 to 500. Um, so that was my uh, CBO scaling strategy. And for retargeting, uh, this is pretty much the um, template or outline that I use. So I go through each one, but I make sure I do uh, three days, 10 days, and also 30 days. So I'm um, gonna target um, each one of those increments. So I do 75% uh, video views, 95% video views, website visitors, view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, and also Facebook and Instagram engagement. Um, and for my lookalike outline, uh, this is pretty much here. Um, what I focus on is 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 5%, also 5 to 10%. Uh, they're the main increments that I focus on. So once again, I do 75% uh, video views, 95% video views, website visitors, view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, purchase, and also Facebook and Instagram engagement. Uh, so for my lookalikes, I focus on the uh, top four countries. So US, UK, Canada, and also Australia. So then after scaling, it becomes time to automate your store. At this point, because it is a one product store, uh, fulfillment is gonna be quite easy. So what I like to use um, is an app called uh, DS's. And using this app, you can uh, bulk fill orders. So it's more convenient than um, Oberlo, which I know um, a lot of you guys use. And so I'm assuming to get uh, 20 to 30 orders a day uh, consistently. What I recommend, I'm um, switching to a shipping agent because what that's gonna help you do is just uh, ship out orders faster. And then at that point, um, you also wanna hire a customer service VA through Upwork, which is gonna help you out a lot. Um, and after automation, I'm gonna go through my ad account right now. So this is gonna be the most uh, crucial part uh, within this whole video. Um, I'm gonna go through and just show you guys everything I launched and also how I scaled and what I did, just so um, you guys know and you guys have an example of how I did it. So I'm gonna jump into my ad account right now. Right now, I am inside of my ad account. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and show you day by day what I did, what I launched, and also how I scaled. All right, so the first thing I did on day one, which is February 21st, what I did is I launched a engagement campaign. So the point of this was to gather 
engagement on my videos just to get video views, likes and comments. That way there is some social proof on the video. So as you can see here, the engagement campaign had uh, 13 active carts and eight checkouts initiated, no purchases. Now that's to be expected. With a engagement campaign, you're not expected to see any purchases. So I spent around $20 and I got approximately 100,000 video views. So if I go into the campaign right now, you can see that I launched three ad sets. So I'm gonna filter by amount spent. You can see that most of the ad set names are to do with pets. That is because the product was a pet product. Now, if I filter by the three ad sets that I launched, so I'm gonna click the ad sets and filter by selection. You can see that one of the ad sets is $10 and the other two are both $5. So what I did for the $10 one, if I click edit, so the budget is $10 and then I targeted all e-packet countries. And then from there, I set the language to English. And then for the targeting, I targeted 10 to 15 broad interest. So you can see dog food has 37 million. Uh, Dog Grooming has 15 million, German Shepherd has 22 million, Golden Retriever has 19 million. So they're all just broad interests. And then if I scroll down, the placements, I did just Facebook and Instagram feeds only on mobile. So what I did is I removed desktop and just kept mobile. And then if I keep scrolling down, the optimization is post engagement. And so if I go back, the other two are the same except for I'm not targeting both Instagram and Facebook. So one of them I'm targeting just Instagram and then the other one I'm targeting just Facebook. I'm doing this because the $10 one, as it's both of them, sometimes it allocates all the budget to just Instagram and it doesn't give Facebook enough attention. So what I did is I split them up. So instead of having just one ad set, $20, I split it up between 10 and then two fives. That way everything is evenly distributed. So that was on day one. And with the $20 spent, I got around 100,000 video views. So if I go to day two, let me just cancel this and then go back to campaigns and filter by amount spent. If I go on to day two, which is February 22nd and then click update, you can see that I launched a conversion campaign. So this campaign on the first day, it got uh, 12 out to carts, 11 checkouts initiated, and six purchases. So it had a return on ad spend of 3.23, which is very, very profitable. And I only spent around $54 to make back 174. So if I go into the campaign, I'll select the campaign and then go into ad sets. And then if I filter by amount spent, I launched about 10 ad sets on this day. Let me just confirm with you guys. So all the ones that have spent money, I'll highlight them. Yeah, so I launched 10 ad sets and each one was a different interest. So this one was BarkBox, this one was German Shepherd, this one was Labrador, this one was Petco, and so on. Now, if I go into the ad set, so if I highlight one ad set, and then click on edit, As soon as this loads up, so the conversion event was purchase. So you always wanna make sure that the conversion event is purchase. As I scroll down, the budget was $5. Now, what I like to do is set it at $5.01. Because Facebook is a bidding system, you want to outbid those at $5. So if you add that extra one cent, it's just placing you above all the others. And then if I scroll down, I targeted all ePacket countries once again, and then the gender was all, languages are the English, and then the targeting was BarkBox. The placements, I did both Facebook and Instagram feeds, mobile only, and then the optimization for ad delivery was conversions. Conversion window was seven day click, one day view. Now, if I go back onto another interest, it will be the same thing, but the targeting would be different. So it's still purchase, it's still $5.01, the locations are still ePacket, language is English, and then targeting is German Shepherd. And the rest are the same. So the placements are the same, and also the optimization is the same. 
So within those 10 ad sets, four of them got sales. Labrador did, Pet Food did, PetSmart, and also dogs. Pet Food had uh, three purchases with only $5.33 spent. So the return on ad spend was 14.63, which is phenomenal. Now, if I go back and filter by the next day, so day three, I'll go back to campaigns. I will filter by amount spent and then deselect this one and then go into February 23rd, update. Now, what I did on this day is I let everything run for another day. So I changed absolutely nothing. So February 24th and then filter by amount spent. You can see that I'm slowly starting to pick up more traction. So if I go into the conversion campaign and I filter by amount spent, you can see now more ad sets are starting to pick up and they're getting more purchases. So that's what I'm after. Now, if I go to the next day, so that day I didn't change anything as well. Now, if I go to the next day, which is the 25th update, go back to campaigns, filter by amount spent. You can now see that the conversion campaign has eight purchases. And also I launched video views for the US only and that had seven purchases. So if I go into the conversion campaign and filter by amount spent, actually I'll filter by ROAS. You can see that a lot of ad sets have purchases. So if I highlight the ones with purchases, you can see that eight ad sets had purchases. The total return on ad spend is 3.02, which is highly profitable. So with $75 spent, we got 228 back. Now, keep in mind that Facebook doesn't track every purchase. So usually this amount here is higher, which means our return on ad spend is higher as well. At this point now, what I'm trying to do is whatever's working, for example, if the day before I saw that pet food had a sale, I would just horizontally scale it. So I would find new interests based on the same ad set. Each day I was trying to launch five to 10 new ad sets. And by that, I mean uh, five to 10 new ad sets with new interests. And the ones that were working, I would duplicate them uh, twice. So once I will leave the budget the same and the other one, I would double the budget. So if I go back and then I go by amount spent and then I select lookalikes, filter by amount spent. You can see that I launched 95% and 75% video view lookalikes for the US only. So I was doing 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 3%, 4 to 5%, and 5 to 10%. What I would do now though, is I would only do 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 5%, and 5 to 10%. So I wouldn't do 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. And so in total for that day, I had... 15 purchases and a ROAS of 2.34. So with 175 spent, I made $410. Now, if I go to February 26 and then update and then filter by amount spent. On this day, I launched a whole bunch of new ad sets. So I launched video view lookalikes for Australia, Canada, and also United Kingdom. And what I also did is I launched more ad sets within the conversions campaign. So if I select that and go through that one, filter by return on ad spend, you can see that I launched a whole bunch of new ad sets. So the key to this is to be successful, what you have to do is keep launching new ad sets every single day. So each day you wanna launch a minimum of five to 10 ad sets and you wanna turn off any ad set that is below your break even ROAS. For me, that break even ROAS was 1.6. So if anything was below that, I would kill it. And then I would launch a new ad set to replace that. So today, I on this day, I launched uh, 10 new ad sets and I killed maybe around seven to eight ad sets. So anything that was not making me money, um, I would just turn it off. And then if I go back, I would show you the, let me filter by amount spent, video view lookalikes. So it's the same thing as the US ones. And then if I go back, the Canada and UK are the same ones. So pretty much that's what I would do is every day I would launch new ad sets and kill what's not working. That's the key to being profitable and remaining consistent with your Facebook ads. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that case study um, of a store that I took from zero to $500,000 in just 50 days. Um, if you guys did enjoy it and um, if you guys took a lot of value from this video, be sure to leave a like on the video and also uh, comment down below in the uh, comment section of other video ideas that um, you want me to make for you guys and I'll be sure to go through and make those. But uh, that's pretty much everything, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.